Take him away from the dark we're still waiting to hear from officials to give us the official word on the victim's identity. But as you mentioned, the L.A. Times reporting that 28-year-old Draco the ruler was the victim of that fatal stabbing. New video from the eyewitness appears to show a fight prior to the stabbing. Now, that viewer tells us he believes this is what led up to the violence. Darrell Caldwell was born December 1, 1993 and raised in South Central Los Angeles. Specifically, Darrell was raised in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods South LA has to offer. The Rolling 100s, home of the highest homicide rate in the area. The 100s is located north of Century Boulevard. It's controlled by a number of independent crip gangs that have built a huge reputation over the years. He barely knew his father, and his mother was a preschool teacher who tried to shelter him from the gang life that was just outside their doorsteps. Darrell said his family was the poorest on the block, but he stated one day he was going to be rich. But his life was never simple. At 12, he was arrested for taking a dollar from a tip jar in Pasadena, and he was shot for the first time at age 15. While he was still a freshman at Washington High, he was pulled over and held without reason while cops interrogated him. After about an hour, the cops left, and almost immediately, he was the victim of a drive-by shooting. The shooters were never caught, and he started carrying a gun with him after this. Although he never claimed a set, he grew up and associated with people from his area who did. But by then, he started taking a liking to music after listening to people like Dipset and the Hot Boys. But even more of an impact would come from a battle rapper named Cocky. He said he liked the way Cocky was smooth and calm. He didn't have to yell or be loud to get his point across. This ended up becoming the biggest influence in him deciding to rap, but also the way he delivered his flow. Initially, he teamed up with his brother Devante, or Ralphie the Plug, and they formed a dance group called Too Greedy. But this eventually evolved into what we know as the Stink Team, with Darrell going by Draco the Ruler. The Stink Team consisted of people like Draco, Ralphie, Ketchy the Great, Kells, Bambino, and Say So the Mac. Draco dropped his first songs on YouTube around 2012, but admitted he wasn't taking it very serious yet. At the time, the Sting team was still very much in the streets. Because of their history with the police, LAPD considered them a classified gang rather than a music group. Despite his affiliation in the streets, Draco continued to drop music, including his first mixtape, Mr. Mosley. This gained him a small buzz in the neighborhood, but he was still very much an undiscovered artist at the time. He finally gained that recognition in March of 2015 after dropping his single, Mr. Gido. The song got over 100,000 plays and was buzzing in the LA area. During this time, DJ Mustard was getting recognition as one of the biggest music producers in the game, and he had just established his own label, Ten Summers. Mustard is from LA as well, and he had heard about Draco from YG's brother who brought his music to him. He reached out to Draco and offered to remix the song with two of his artists, Choice and RJ. The remix dropped later that month and was a massive success, blowing up to over 6 million views. Seeing how well it performed, Mustard then offered to sign Draco to Ten Summers, but he declined. Draco said this created tension between him and Mustard's camps. It wasn't anything too serious, but he said it felt like he was blackballed from certain opportunities due to this. He noticed certain people in music studios would no longer let him record music with them. With Mustard being associated with so many artists in the LA area, Draco knew he was on his own after this. Shit started getting weird, like, he, I don't know, like, I guess I didn't want to sign, so, then that's, I guess, when, like, people from his group and shit, like, Guess they was mad at me because I didn't want to sign, so. Even though he grew up around Crips, wore blue bandanas, and associated with his neighborhood, he made it clear he refused to join any set. Because Draco didn't claim a particular gang, he initially collaborated with all sides, but this would later turn problematic. He only repped his rap group, and because of this, the Sting team would often be tested. During the summer of 2016, numerous blood sets declared war on Draco and Stink Team. It's rumored Stink beat up Inglewood Bloods in a boxing match that was recorded and went viral. At some point, Draco exchanged diss tracks with RJ, even though just months before they remixed Mr. Gay Doe together. RJ was DJ Mustard's artist and close collaborator with YG, which brought another neighborhood into the mix. This led to a lot of back and forth issues. Stink Team cars were shot up, there were robbery attempts, and Draco's mother house was sprayed with bullets. But at the same time, he had a massive buzz now, and he was getting recognized for his flow that was very different from anything coming out of the West Coast. He continued to build off the momentum he now had, dropping two more mixtapes throughout 2016. I Am Mr. Mosley 2, and So Cold I Do Him. But in December of that year, things took a turn for the worst. 
On December 10th, Draco and Stink Team headed to a pajama party in Carson. What they didn't know is their ops from Inglewood were already there. When Draco and the Stink Team pulled up and walked toward the house, they noticed the bloods from Inglewood. Although Draco said he tried to avoid confrontation, almost immediately shots went off from a man behind a black Mercedes. One of the bloods from Inglewood named Red Bull was hit multiple times and passed away on the scene. LAPD then started an investigation on the murder, and they checked security footage from nearby houses. The murder itself was not on camera, but a black Mercedes SUV fleeing the scene was. Investigators matched the plates with the car from a music video. The video was Draco's Chunky Monkey. This was enough evidence to arrest Draco and the Stink Team for questioning. After they all refused to talk, police then put every member in their own cells with informants pretending to be inmates to see if they could get a confession. The undercover cops wore wires and got one of them to confess the names AB and Kells as the killers. One of the Stink Team members named Sola would flip on the entire group and gave up details about the entire incident. Although Draco was not named the killer, he was still facing a gun possession charge. In addition, he had to remain behind bars for a few years due to a retrial. Prosecutors argued that his lyrics and music videos were evidence that he was part of a violent gang. Police then claimed that he had gone to the party that night to murder rapper RJ, but when he didn't show up, they went for Red Bull instead. RJ even spoke up about this and dismissed their entire beef, stating it was a misunderstanding, and even backed up Draco saying he was never trying to kill him. Meanwhile he was locked up, many other rappers from LA started blowing up with similar styles to Draco. He started a whole new sound on the west coast and now he had to watch as others gain recognition for it. Draco didn't let this stop him from getting hurt though, and he released a few projects from behind bars, including his iconic, Thank You For Using GTL. The entire project was recorded over the jail phone and released in the summer of 2020, and it received positive reviews all around. He was then acquitted of all the murder charges later that month, but still spent an additional 6 months behind bars while they investigated him for gang conspiracy. After having an outburst of hearing the news, he was given a gag order and sent to solitary confinement. He remained behind bars all the way until November of 2020 when he was offered a plea deal. Within 30 minutes of his release, he was in the studio recording new music from the 200 pages of lyrics he had written down. Within two weeks, he was back to releasing full-length projects, starting with his We Know The Truth. Although he had been gone for almost four years, many new fans tuned in after hearing about his story. He was quickly regaining momentum on the west coast and even got Drake to hop on a song with him in February. But his welcome home was short-lived, and soon, tension between Draco and multiple other rappers on the west started building again. YG and Draco began going back and forth on Instagram after YG welcomed Bobby Schmurder home from prison. The two exchanged a few posts back and forth. While this is happening, the war between the Bloods and Crips in LA was only getting worse. Bloods defaced the Nipsey Hustle mural, and Crips were retaliating, even taking the life of one that was caught on Instagram Live. Draco also still had issues with the Inglewood Bloods from the Red Bull incident years before, and he was beefing with their rappers Frosty the Snowman and AZ Chike. He then released a song titled Ingleweird, dissing them, and they would respond with a song of their own. Soon after, Frosty the Snowman was shot and in critical condition, but it's not confirmed who did it, as he had beef with other gangs. Rumors started to spread that there was a bounty on Draco's head by just about every blood gang in LA. On December 18th, Draco was set to perform at Once Upon a Time in LA. This was only his second concert since returning home. It was a large music performance with artists from all over LA that were set to attend. Draco was accompanied by his six friends and one security guard, and they were getting ready to perform soon. They started walking toward the back of the stage. Someone then yelled out, fuck Stink Team and fuck Draco. It was a group of another six or so people wearing red hoodies. Draco and Ralphie confronted them, and it didn't take long for a brawl to start. But they had all been stripped of their guns prior to entering the showgrounds, so it was just punches being thrown. After a few minutes of back and forth, the fight ended. The Stink Team continued to move toward the stage. For a moment, everything was calm again and nobody seemed to be hurt. But a journalist who was following Draco that night says moments later a mob of 50 or more people came sprinting after the Stink Team. Much like an ambush, they circled them, and once again a fight broke out. In a matter of two minutes, they were completely swarmed before people started fleeing the scene. After the crowd was dispersed, Draco was spotted on the ground with a stab wound on his neck. By now, medical and police were notified, but it appeared to be too late. Draco was sent to the hospital that night where he passed away. No arrests were made as it's not confirmed who was responsible, but fans have speculated that the bloods in the video are part of YG's camp, and one man is even seen wearing a 400 hoodie, YG's clothing brand. Draco was just starting to get the nationwide success he deserved. 
He overcame poverty, was falsely accused of murder, and still managed to come back and change the music scene in LA for good. For that, his music and story will live on.